Welcome to the Lion's Den with Seth, a podcast where progressive men and women can learn and teach each other the ways of the land. The Lion's Den is where royalty comes to counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Seth. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome back, everybody. This is your boy, Seth, with the infamous <laughs> Khalif. But yeah, so wait, before we go into it, what do you think about the enlisted Jesus? What, what do you think about that? <laughs> Just give it a real. This is 100. We ain't got to get too deep into it. Yeah, no, it. man. I, so uh, I'm actually humble. Okay. So I knew you would say that, but yeah, no, know, I mean, yeah. I'm serious, man. It's humbling to to think that, um, you know, people think of you in, in those terms that mm-hmm. there's that level of admiration for, uh, the position and the things that, that we've been doing to, to help our, our airmen. Mm-hmm. Um, I do worry a little bit about, it doesn't bother me at all. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, I do worry a little bit though about, um, certain people, some people being offended yes, from a religious absolutely. standpoint. And so I just tell mm-hmm. people, man, just be mindful of um, that it's not funny or whatever to, to everybody. Mm-hmm. But me personally, um, I appreciate all the love, man. I appreciate that, you know, folks look at us in a good light and think that, that we're doing a good job. And and uh, the memes are getting better, man. Yeah, are they? they? Yeah, they you, know, you, first, you saw the one I sent you, the, uh, what is it, uh, do the right thing? Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. was retarded, but it was nice, though. Yeah, when they first came out, man, you know, the hands would still be white and the head would be all crooked. Now, <laughs> now they're like, so man, now wow, that's, better. that's like, wow, that's good, man. I, I sent it to my mom and everything. Bro. Really? So, you know, really? What was the yeah. best one you've seen? Um, I think I liked, uh, it's not even a list of Jesus one, man, the Thanos one. Dan, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I yeah, saw I that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I saw that. Okay. Well, listen, we're gonna we're gonna stay in that vein a little bit, um, and we kind of went over these. But um, so, what are your thoughts about removing testing? Do you think that it will strengthen the good old boy system? No, I don't think it strengthens the good old boy system, man. I think it it strengthens the ability for us to select the right leaders. Okay. And so we just removed testing this year for the first time mm-hmm. for senior senior NCOs, and what that means is now your promotion will be based upon your performance, yeah, your right. ability to get the job done. Mm-hmm. And um, now, to be honest, can you weed out all of the bias that yeah, in the good old boy people system? still involved? Right? No, no, right. not really. Um, but we are in the process of redesigning the entire list evaluation system where that will help us get rid of some of that. Mm-hmm. some of that bias but uh, the good part about it is and, and I know you understand the board process and all that mm-hmm. you got two chiefs and a colonel that's evaluating uh, the record it, it it does become challenging um, to to have you know a lot of bias yes. in that system mm-hmm. uh, unless all three of them happen to know you and either happen to like right. you or not like you right uh, what happens is is if somebody is kind of outside of the norm outside of the limits mm-hmm then the other two will, will call them on it and, and challenge, you know, you get a split and all this, this other good stuff. So mm-hmm. there are some measures in place that keeps the, the, that from happening. But, but as long as you have human beings assessing other human beings, man, you're going to have bias. And yes. so I, I've been, I've read a couple of books. One is called the, the nine lies about work. Mm. And then the other one is uh, talking to strangers by okay. Malcolm Gladwell. And they okay. both hit on the same thing, man. That, hey man, we ain't really cut out to, uh, evaluate other human beings. That's right. We are not good, and research and data science says that we're not good at uh, assessing other human beings, that our assessment, my assessment of you is mostly based on my own bias. That's right. And um, That's right. So as long as we have a system that, that does that, we're going we're gonna to continue to have some so, of that. But, but you I, know, so that brings me to another point, though, and um, shout out to Action <coughs> Jackson. He told me to tell you what's up. But, um, so what are we doing to put those people in the right positions of leadership? You know? Yeah, so you know, leadership development and talent management, man, it's it's you know, it's a it's not that complex, but it's 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 uh, uh we one one thing I would say is right now we have to work within the confines of our system. And yes. the system that we have has mm-hmm. WAPS testing and yes. and whatnot. Um but for our senior NCOs Again, I, I think we're going to get a better product in the end. We're going to mm-hmm. get a better um, 
output of the folks who have the skills necessary to, to be leaders. And then <clears throat> it's really up to commanders and chiefs and the senior leaders, CFMs, um, to have an understanding of not just what these people have done, like mm-hmm. their performance and what they've achieved, but um, their level of emotional intelligence, yes. their ability to build relationships, mm-hmm. their ability to think broadly or strategically, mm-hmm. um, their character, you know, the things that kind of really matter for leaders that we don't measure. Mm-hmm. So at some point in the future, uh, again, as we redesign the system, mm-hmm. we have to begin measuring the things that matter. That's right. Emotional intelligence, strategic thinking, yes. relationship building. Absolutely. Uh, but until then, then it's up to leaders at every level uh, to say that, hey, man, just because you made master or senior or chief or whatever, it don't mean I have to make you a leader. That's right. Right. Absolutely. And, and so sometimes and and that takes uh, another thing that we don't measure. Uh, that takes courage. Brother. It takes courage. Yes. To say, and real talk, too. Yeah. You know, say, hey, hey, Seth. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> no, see, don't nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you just made senior. Right. But. Uh, here are the things that I think you're missing and That's things right. that you need to work on. Mm-hmm. And then, so until you get there, man, I'm going to leave you in this position and we're going to allow Master Sergeant so-and-so or whoever to be the flight chief. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you can, if you can, you know, show me that you, you can work on these things, then here's the plan for you. Got you. For, I mean, it takes courage. Man. It does. It takes courage. It does. Because, you know, lots of feelings going to be hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, it puts that Master Sergeant in a, you know, challenging position. But uh, so the the... The Air Force alone mm-hmm. uh, can't fix the entire problem. It takes no. leaders at all levels yeah. to have a keen eye, ear, and understanding of, hey, man, what does what real leadership mm-hmm. look like? And just because, you know, we've fallen into this trap over the years that past performance equals potential. That's right. Not always. No, no. You could be a great mechanic mm-hmm. or great load master mm-hmm. or great, you know, cyber warrior. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a great leader. That's right. It doesn't mean that you have the ability to motivate, encourage, inspire, mm-hmm. inspire people. And, we, and so we have to have a system that, that can recognize that and say, Hey man, you, you, I mean, you were right. You mm-hmm. were the award winner and all these functional mm-hmm. things. Yeah, you knocked you, it out. You knocked it out. Mm-hmm. But here's, here's where I see you're lacking. That's right. And either, develop a process to help them get there mm-hmm. or keep them on some type of um, technical track. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. You're so, right. so I really like the Marine Corps. I don't know if you're familiar uh, school with the, the Marine Corps leadership. What they do. So in the Marine Corps, when you get to E seven, you have to declare you along with your leadership, whether you want to stay in a technical track or in a leadership track. Oh, really? They give you a choice. Right. Which okay. is which is why, you know, in the Marine Corps, you have two types of E-9s. You have sergeant majors who would be the equivalent of our command chiefs. Mm-hmm. And then you have master gunnery sergeants mm-hmm. who are already pro- probably closest to our career field manager. Oh, got you. So okay. When you, when you get to E-7, mm-hmm. you know, there's two separate tracks. and But there's a there's a pathway to, to E-9. Mm both sides Mm -hmm. so for those folks who are i feel you want to stay technically Mm -hmm. you know um you know engaged in the work that they're doing and then there's a track for those folks that i would say that are like me that are Mm -hmm. just kind of destined to to be in these leadership roles Mm -hmm. that don't don't have no tech like i ain't got no technical i'm looking at your stuff i like man i want something like this but i wouldn't have the first clue like how to play (laughs) yeah 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 you too but but i mean because your career field is dental right yeah so was you feeling that when you was no, doing man. it yeah i mean no. yeah i feel you i, Dude, feel you. Yeah. I wasn't that good right? <laughs> i was good at the people stuff there you, you go know, i right. was good at supervising people right right now right. i had to work really of hard course. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. to to make it through the technical aspects of being absolutely a good, a good technician mm-hmm. but uh, uh what i really grasped you know throughout my career was mm-hmm. the leadership part absolutely take care of people and mm-hmm. and doing all that stuff yeah same here yeah same here. And you know what? I wish it was a FSC for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it ain't. It ain't. But but you, you you have to grow where you're where you're at. I read something the other day that said that uh, a a flower doesn't care where oh, a flower doesn't care what flowers blooming next to them. They just mm-hmm. grow and bloom. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know? And so by staying focused on your own, you mm-hmm. know, your own drive, you know, it's going to 
Yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah. I mean, I always say you got to bloom where you plant it, right? That's right. And um, but there is something to that, right? It is. If if a flower is planted and, and the conditions aren't optimal there for you it go. to grow, there you go. And 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 uh, it's not. Uh, watered and cared for. You dig it. Then you I dig it. You dig you it know, and I dig it. So right, yeah. I, I guess with that being said, what would you say to those individuals that may need to be replanted mm-hmm. because their circumstances aren't conducive to, you feel me? Yeah. So I, I would say, first of all, um, you know, do the best you can with what you got. Yes. So the one thing that won't help is if you, if you find yourself in a job or mm-hmm. at a base or doing something that you feel like, hey man, this is just not me. Not me. Mm-hmm. The one thing that won't help is complaining Com- about yes. it, uh, not trying, mm-hmm. you know, all that mm-hmm. stuff. So I would say, hey man, give it everything you got. Mm-hmm. Um, and one or two things will happen. Mm-hmm. One, you might surprise yourself. You might you might find that wow, that's know, true. I didn't think I liked mm-hmm. music, but man, this is and I'm a DJ. <laughs> this is great. Right? <laughs> right, right, right. Or I didn't think I liked mm-hmm. computers, but yeah. man, I'm really catching on to this. Right. Or you you will truly discover that man, this is just just not my thing. But the best way to get a a better job is to do the best you can in the one that at you the got. one that you're at, absolutely. And, uh, and then figure out how to effectively communicate that to the people who can help you. Mm-hmm. Um, again, saying, "Man, this is messed up. I can't. I ain't cut out for this stuff." And this mm-hmm. and that. But saying, "Hey, you know, um, ma'am, sir, you know, I." I really want to do the best that I can Absolutely. as, you know, uh, a cyber technician, mm-hmm. but I'm just not, you know, it doesn't come to me naturally. I have to work really hard, so I'm going to keep trying. But let me tell you where I think I'd be better suited. There we go. And uh, I, I think, uh, and then you have to have patience. You got to have perseverance. Yes. You know, because nothing happens overnight. Not everybody's going to say, oh, man, well, I'm glad you decided you don't want to be this. And we'll <laughs> right, just send right. you over to the make room. <laughs> right, you, right, right. Do your thing, uh, right. Now, another thing that increases your chances of getting to where you really need to be is if you got credibility. That's what, yeah. If when you come to me with that conversation, mm-hmm. I say, Joker, you ain't been to work on time in <laughs> right, you know, right. 15 days. Right. And you got all these challenges. But mm-hmm. if I say, okay, man, you know what? I would have never guessed that because you do work really hard and you're mm-hmm. always on time and you're a good teammate and, <clears throat> you know, you're always striving for excellence and mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. You know what? I'll, let, let, I, I'm willing to explore that option right. for you. Right. And um, so, again, that kind of goes into the something that we don't learn until later. Some of us don't learn it yes. at all, the emotional intelligence That's part true. of, you know, how, how, how do you how do you work through? challenges when when you're not where you think you should be now what do you think about have you ever heard of the book called uh the speed of trust yeah yeah how applicable do you think that is when it comes down to the subordinate and supervisor's relationship like yes i may have this issue but i may not be able to tell you this because i don't even trust you yeah now you're in a position that i'm supposed to trust you Mm -hmm. but your track record has shown Right. And now don't get me wrong. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. But, but so what do you think about that as far yeah. as how imperative trust is? Yeah, I think trust is real, real important. Man. Mm-hmm. And um, in the military, we we tend to believe that our stripes automatically somehow gain us. Bruh, nothing. Trust, <laughs> don't <right>? do nothing. <laughs> but, you know, I believe, man, you, you got to gain, you got to earn the trust of even the Airman Basic that comes yes. in right off the right off the street, mm-hmm. and you got to show people that you care about them. You got to show that um, that you have a real vested interest in their lives and their careers. Absolutely, and you got to give them a reason mm-hmm. to to trust you. If you want people uh, to give their lives, yes, essentially yes. for the United States Air Force or for any 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 calls, mm-hmm. man, you got to be able to show people that, 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 that they can trust you. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that takes time. Yes. That doesn't, you don't, you don't gain. And it's, it's particularly, um, challenging, I would say for chiefs, because when, you know, when you're a chief, you just, uh, you know, people see the chief stripe and they just automatically think like, wow, man, yeah. the dude no chief. yeah, he and did he it. Must be somebody. Right. Uh, not really. Not really. You know, you got the E nines and you got the chiefs, you, you know, you got to earn trust and credibility. Absolutely. Just like everybody else. Yes, sir. But, uh, yeah, I, I would agree with you, man. Trust is like, 
it's incredibly important. And, and even me as Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, man, with the folks that I, that I deal with, both, you know, senior leaders from general officers all the mm-hmm. way down to A1Cs and stuff that I that I communicate with. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have to earn their trust. Absolutely. You know, and I, and I, and I don't mind putting in that work. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Well, look, one more. We're going to get one more blue. Uh, question then we're gonna leave that alone all right so is there any idea and shout out to the uh us mentor us but is there any idea about uh rolling out the changes when it comes down to the line numbers that match with the board scores and not time and grade and time of service you know to be honest man i haven't given that um a whole lot of thought Uh, i've actually never thought about it because when i was growing up in the air force Mm -hmm. um I was so happy I made it. I didn't care when. Didn't I even it care. And I, <laughs> right. and, I, and I did pretty good right, right in my career. So every time, except for Chief, I, I was all others. Mm-hmm. So I I never had to think about when I was going to put it on, except mm-hmm. figuring out when the last month. That's right. What right. was, but uh, but I'm I, but I'm um, I'm open, and I think people know that mm-hmm. if if you put something in front of me that mm-hmm. says, hey, there's a legitimate reason why we should change the way that we do you know, line numbers based on board score or, or whatever it is, mm-hmm. then I'm open to it, man. I'll take a look at it. And if it makes sense, then we can implement it. I can dig that. One last one. And it's about PT. <laughs> Do you think that there would be a change when it comes down to the age range, right? Is So from 19 to 25, I don't think it's too much of a difference, right? But when you go past 25 to 29, you, you know what I mean? So yeah. it, do, do you see that shifting in a way or what? Not really. The data suggests that there's not a huge difference between uh, the scores and the performance um, from 20 to 29, mm-hmm. from 30 to 39. Uh, there is a little bit of a difference mm-hmm. uh, right around the age of 44, okay. 44, 45, right? Mm-hmm. So the folks that are in that 40 to 49 mm-hmm. category, mm-hmm. I would counter that with just some real talk. It's like, hey, man, if you in that category, because I'm in that category right now. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Next year, I'll be in another category. Oh, my goodness. And I don't even, I, I might even have to show up. Yeah. When you turn 50, man, I don't even know if you actually got to show <laughs> you up. Mean, hey, I don't think like, they got a paper for that. I know, right? You just like, <laughs> right. You like yeah. email in. That's right, yeah. You know, 97, like, right? Yeah, but, like, um, like you're still alive. <laughs> right. I mean, it's so easy, mm-hmm. right, to pass. I mean, it's easy to get an excellent when you're in that in that category, but but anyway, the data suggests that there's not a huge difference, and mm-hmm. there's there's really not a need for for us to change the age the age range back to five years like we used to in the past. But let me just say this, man, about PT. Um, somebody asked me the other day, "Hey, what is the Air Force's culture when it comes to PT?" And so what I did, I I asked a few airmen and senior leaders, you know, what they thought, right. And they said various things, all centered around the PT test. Yes, and um, it validated my my theory that our, the Air Force culture mm-hmm. around PT is the PT test. Mm-hmm. What I really think the Air Force culture should be, though, mm-hmm. is me, you, every other airman in the Air Force. If we decided, you know what, um, I'm an airman, and as a condition of my service. I'm supposed to be in shape. So just be ready. I'm supposed to be fit. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to put the right things in my body. I'm supposed to get the right amount of sleep in order for me to do my job. To be optimum, yes. Then if every person in the United States Air Force who is a staff sergeant or above, from staff sergeant all the way to general officer, Mm -hmm. four-star, would decide, you know what, if you're going to be on my team Mm -hmm. or in my unit, or in my command, or in my squadron, mm-hmm. or whatever piece of this pie I own, guess what? <laughs> you're going to be in shape. Mm-hmm. You're going to be fit, mm-hmm. and you're going to be healthy. Right. You're going to eat right. And I'm going to make sure of that. And I and I might do that through uh, unit PT. Mm-hmm. I might do it through training. I might do it through videos. Mm-hmm. I might do it through making sure that we got some celery at the promotion ceremony yeah. instead of cake. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but, but I'm going to personally make sure that fitness and health mm-hmm. are a part of who we, who we are. I understand. Then the test becomes just this, hey, man, I can pass the freaking test. Yeah. You know. In my sleep. Yeah. And we don't have to worry so much about mm-hmm. the test. You know, the Department of Defense says we have to test every service member mm-hmm. once a year. I'm, I'm, we've been trying to get that changed to 
um, every 18 months. But mm-hmm. uh, so we have to take, you can't get rid of the test, but all of our energy and focus is around the test and how do I pass the test and test the test and not a lot of energy around, hey man, how do I make sure that these people who work for me are, are good to go, optimally fit to yes. perform. Now, then you enter this discussion about, okay, if you are a special warfare airman, if you are a tech P or oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 or a PJ or special reconnaissance, which mm-hmm. used to be special weather, then, mm-hmm. you know, you got to be rucking and you got to be able to do all this stuff, which is all true. Right. But what if I'm a, a, a Intel analyst and I just sit at a computer all there day? There you go. Man, the studies and the research suggest that um, being in shape. Mm-hmm. Improves your mental acuity. Yes. Yours and, and, and improves your ability to pay attention and understand the details and so on and so forth. So mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter what your AFSC is. Now, again, I do believe that our special warfare airmen and our EOD and fire and security forces, uh, they've transitioned to a functional fitness yes. test that has 10 components that's designed to make sure that they can actually do the things physically that – their job requires them to do, but for the rest of us, um, being in optimal health, yes, man, increases our ability to to perform, whether mm-hmm. it's behind the desk or jumping out of an airplane. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. Well, look, I appreciate it. So enough of that. Enough yeah. of that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, so take that out. So <clears throat> now I want you to put back on your Khalif hat, right? Yeah. It's so, always on. It's always on. Always on. And you know what? I, and I would like to say too, man. Um, just not just who you are, man, you, you've always been you. And I appreciate that, you know, just, you know, not just being your boy, but seeing how you communicate around, you know, uh, uh, not just w- what you do, but how you connect with people. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Right. So you've always been you. Yeah. And Thanks, it, it's, it's rare. Seriously. Right. Cause it's not what you do is how it's, it's the you in it, but mm-hmm. you know, you're not this. so to speak. You get what I mean? Right. It's just a job. So I do appreciate that. But, um, so think about this, your, the soundtrack to your life. If you can pick three artists living or dead, right? Oh yeah. I had to hit you. So living or dead, who would it be? Three musicians, no matter what so, genre. Yeah. 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 So I would say Sam Cooke, Okay, right on. Uh, who is uh, my favorite artist? Mm-hmm. Uh, James Brown. Okay. Uh, the <laughs> song that comes to mind Which is uh, It Costs to Be the Boss. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, Sam Cooke's mm-hmm. A Change Is Gonna Come is, mm-hmm. like, probably mm-hmm. my all-time mm-hmm. uh, favorite song. Mm-hmm. And then uh, maybe Rakim. So I just Rakim. bought Rakim's new book called Straight Sweat up. the Technique. Yeah. And uh, was I can appreciate it's pretty good. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm about halfway through, but mm-hmm. I can appreciate, um, you know, his style mm-hmm. and and his his um, his conviction. Yes. Right. So he when he first he talks in his book about uh, the first time meeting Marley Marl mm-hmm. and. Uh, Marley Marl felt like well, the first time he went to Marley Marl's house and was in the studio mm-hmm. and he was laying down a, a track and Marley Marl thought he didn't have enough energy. Mm-hmm. And he kept telling them, Man, you got to pick it up. That was good, but you got to pick it up. Mm-hmm. You got to pick it up. And and he refused. And he was a young kid too. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. in his t- early teens. Okay. And, and he stood his ground uh, because he just felt like, hey, all this yelling and stuff is just not me. That's not um, right. In order for me to be authentic and be who I am, you know, I got this laid back, mellow mm-hmm. style of, of of rapping, and so I, I can appreciate his conviction and his song. Uh, Eric B is president is yeah. maybe the uh, uh, the song that that I can remember almost the whole song. Are you that, serious? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I came in the door. <laughs> I said it before. Yes. I never let the mic magnetize Man, me. The yes, yeah. me. Bite mm-hmm. me, invite me to rhyme. So uh, yeah, so I would say Sam Cooke, uh, James Brown, and and Eric B. Eric I mean, uh, oh Rakim, Rakim, yeah. Ah, uh, that's solid. So you weren't expecting that one. <laughs> I wasn't. That's good. That's good. It's totally off the cuff. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Let me make sure I swap this around. Hey, I appreciate everybody for for being a part of this uh, at the Lions Den. And again, this is the Leadership Week, and fortunately, we have one of the my boy, right? And one of your boy, your, 
your leader. And not just that, this is it's truly authentic. And so make sure you guys, if you don't, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, right, to the Lion's Den with Seth. We're going to be on again later on in the week, but I appreciate y'all. All right, I really, really do appreciate y'all. Hey, Scooby, let me just say this, oh, man, before we... let me swap out. Before we get out of here. I want to go in your night. That, well, what's up? Yeah. I, I just want to say thanks, man. I want to say thanks not only for, you know, setting this up, but for being such an inspiration. And, uh, dude, you're a published author. Uh, you're a DJ. You're an entrepreneur on so many levels. You've um, created your own path, which is... Frankly, relatively rare. You know, I get to see a lot of people in the Air Force. And there's a certain there's a certain level of comfort associated mm-hmm. with being in the Air Force. Yes, it is. And uh, a lot of people are afraid to step out on faith and do their own thing and create their own path in mm-hmm. life. I, I do know some people who, who, who have done it, but I will say it's, it's, it's pretty rare. Mm-hmm. And I've always been intrigued, man, by, you know, your ability to be you. Mm. Your ability to... I appreciate that. You know, to... To, to reach for your goals mm-hmm. and do things that are way outside of the norm for, mm-hmm. you know, most airmen, most seniors. You know? yeah, so, right, man, right. I just want to say thanks, man. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, um, I've always been inspired by, by what you do. Straight up. And, uh, yeah, man. I appreciate no, that. No, no man, it, it goes both ways, seriously. Yeah. And I appreciate you being there to help me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like our conversations and, and, and everything like that because sometimes – talking to people about your ideas and your dreams, it may be too lofty yeah. and, and they can't dig it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But you've never said, no, don't do that. Yeah. You might say, try this. Yeah. Right. And we ain't going to talk about, uh, I know you got to go. So we ain't going to yeah. talk about the idea that a few years ago I was, I told you to get the fuck out. Yeah. Right? I'm like, man, you're too fucking talented <laughs> right. to still be partnering yeah. around in the airport. I, I know, man. But, but you know what? It's, <laughs> uh, but you know what? It's time. Yeah. It yeah. is time. And so I would like to not just extend this, invitation to you again but i would love to work with you yep. in the future you know what i mean to help change the world and uh ladies and gentlemen i did give him a book i didn't do it on the air but i gave him a book and and i just want to make sure that you know that um you're part of that book because you helped you know mold certain you know chapters up in there so sorry you weren't a part of that but you yep. will be a part of everything else and so i gave you two one My for man. you yep. and someone else if if you want to gift it to them appreciate right? it bro but um but thank you you know what i'm saying for coming up in the lion's den and blessing it you know you had the first uh celebrities you know what i'm saying <laughs> up in here but no seriously man thank you and uh enjoy your trip and yeah. back home safe with you and your and your bride and everything but um yeah, we appreciate you. All right. Thanks, All right. Cool. Hey, yeah, my man. Seriously. Real talk. And that's how we go do that. All right. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Make sure to listen to the show on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, and Radio Public, where you can subscribe or via RSS so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you like or dislike this episode, We'd appreciate your feedback on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Lionscast. Check out the book, The Black Collar Mindset, The Art of Strategic Thinking on Amazon or www.theblackcollarmindset.com. A manual to maneuver through life strategically by holding yourself accountable. Tune in next week for another episode of The Lion's Den with Seth.